Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. The updated Heisman through the first week of October, first day of October. It's October 1 as we're recording it. One thing I would say really quick, because I want to get to this pretty quickly and then get to some other hoop stuff, is basically that in my opinion, um, you know, talking about the Heisman transparently doesn't really make sense this early. Uh, to me, it's a November, December award. What do you basically do from mid-November on? I mean, even go back to last year, Jaden Daniels, never forget, Jaden Daniels and LSU were three and two coming into September, on September for, or on, uh, into October. On October 1st of 2023, LSU was three and two, and nobody was talking Jaden Daniels for Heisman. So this stuff changes quickly. By the way, USC was probably four and oh, five and oh, whatever they were, and probably Caleb Williams was the favorite. So things change quickly, but I do want to talk about my updated Heisman coming into this month. Um, and I'll just be transparent. To me, the Heisman is almost a no-brainer right now. October 1, it's subject to change. Travis Hunter, Colorado Buffaloes. And I know every time we talk about Coach Prime, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, they're this, they're that, they're overrated, blah, blah. No, no, no. First of all, they're four and one. I think they can win the Big 12. We've talked about them at length this week. But beyond that, what Travis Hunter is doing is quite literally something that's never happened in any of our lives. Okay, I can't speak to the leather helmet, play both sides of the football kind of way back in the day. But you look at what Travis Hunter is doing, okay? And I was thinking about this earlier in the week. And we talked about this earlier in the week, is that, listen, we're, we're comparing him to Charles Woodson. And what Charles Woodson did was absolutely incredible, okay? Let's not undersell or minimize what Charles Woodson did. Charles Woodson, I looked it up, I confirmed it today. I want to welcome a new sponsor to the Aaron Torres pod, Blue Chew. Fellas, remember back in the day when you were always ready to go? Well, things change. You got a lot on your mind. Your football team isn't very good. Well, here's the good news. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in chewable form. To get started, it's so easy. Just go to bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. No awkward trip to the doctors, no waiting at the pharmacy, no stink eyes, no raised eyebrows, nothing. Thing is, though, I know a lot of you are probably wondering, Torres, does it actually work? Do you think I need to try it? Well, here's the deal. Try it for a month for free, and I think there will be no turning back, all right? You'll love it. Your partner is going to love it. Your football team may stink, but you'll be rocking like the 85 Bears between the sheets. So go ahead, try it out, and here is the great news. We have a special offer for listeners of the Aaron Torres pod. You can try Blue Chew for free when you use the code TORRES at checkout. All you got to do is pay $5 in shipping. Go to bluechew.com, use promo code TORRES at checkout. You get Blue Chew for free for a, for, for a free month, and you only have to pay $5 shipping. Again, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. Thank you to Blue Chew for sponsoring the Aaron Torres podcast. He had 11 catches as a wide receiver the year he won the Heisman. Now, he did return a punt for a touchdown, and I think that was where he did the famous kind of Heisman pose. Um, and he was an elite defensive back, 11 interceptions, okay? Travis Hunter right now at his number two position. His number two position, which is wide receiver, he is currently third in the country in catches, fifth in total receiving yards. And that's as a as a that's his number two spot. He's a cornerback. They never throw him the ball, but he currently and he still has two interceptions on defense, but he has 46 catches, 561 yards, six touchdowns, 12 yards per reception. But the crazy part is he's playing at an elite level defensively as well. I think it's also worth noting, and we talked about this, became the first Colorado receiver ever to have five straight receiving games of 100-plus yards. So right now, to me, it's almost a no-brainer. I think Travis Hunter should be your guy. I think he probably is your guy. 
Travis Hunter is my Heisman favorite through just a couple day, just a couple weeks of the season, but we will see what happens from here. Really quickly, number two on my Heisman list, I would still probably have Cam Ward at number two. Um, listen, he's a little loose with the football for me. As I said, two interceptions against uh, against Virginia Tech, a fumble and an interception against uh, against Florida in the season opener. But he's also balling. 1,700 yards passing, 18 touchdowns, those four interceptions that we just talked about. But on the season, um, you know, this is a guy that that is second in the country in passing yardage through all these games, and even his bad games. Like the game against Virginia Tech, you sit there and say, oh, you know, he could have been better. 24 of 38, 343 yards. Now, I know how it ended. I know we can debate that. I know we could argue that. But even his bad games are like Heisman level. So I, I would like to see him take care of the football a little bit more. Uh, Miami's schedule is not crazy, but I, I think this Cal game is weird. I really do ask producer Matt, an Auburn fan. They went out there last year and barely survived 1030 Eastern kickoff. Miami's going into a bye, but right now today I would have Cam Ward at number two. Number three, a player that I mentioned earlier. I mean, we got to give it up to Ashton, Ash, Ashton Genty, okay? Because when I look at what he is doing, it is just bananas. I mean, Guy, like I said, 845 yards rushing, 82 carries, which means he's averaging 10 yards per carry through almost 100 carries. That is so absurd. And don't tell me he hasn't done it against anybody. Oregon has NFL dudes all over their defense. Two games with already 250 plus yards, plus, as I said, 192 or whatever it was against Oregon. And so I'm not going to diminish him because he plays at Boise or the schedule is this or da da da. da. 845 yards, 13 touchdowns, 10 yards per rush this season. He is my number three guy. Now, like everybody else, we'll see if he can keep it up. I think for a running back in this era, it's just so hard because a quarterback can just drop back, drop back, drop back, drop back, drop back, make plays. Running back needs blockers. They need, you know, uh, a scheme. They need a quarterback that can throw the ball. So to keep defenses honest. So I don't know if he can keep it up, but I don't know how we could not have him at number three. Number four, I think this is where it gets kind of obvious. I do have Jalen Milrow at number four. And I think we are sort of underappreciating what he's doing this season. This is a guy 964 yards passing, 73% completion percentage with 10 touchdowns this year. That completion percentage up about 7% from a year ago. You know, Compare that to Carson Beck, whose completion percentage is down 10%. Shows you how good he's been. And then don't forget... Jalen Milrow also 273 yards rushing, eight rushing touchdowns. Uh, he's been awesome. The win was huge. And I think the cool part is there's a lot of big games still on that Bama schedule. At LSU, at Tennessee, at Oklahoma, Auburn at home. There's going to be plenty of stages for Jalen Milrow to make his case. It's hard for me to put him ahead of any of those other three guys, though, ahead of him. Number four, number five, and number six, I'll be quick. Uh, I do have six guys on my ballot as of right now. I want to give credit to somebody that I think has been a little bit overlooked right now. That is Dylan Sampson, the uh, the running back at Tennessee. Tennessee's only played three games so far. He's got 449 yards rushing, six and a half yards per carry, and like Ashton Genty, 10 touchdowns so far this year. So he has been awesome, and obviously the crazy part about Tennessee – those first couple games, he's basically not playing in the second half and still had over 100 yards rushing in each of those games. So I would have Dylan Sampson at number five. And number six, how about this? I looked it up on Sunday night. Now, it may have changed since then. He's not even on the Heisman board right now, which I think is a gross oversight. I would have the 17-year-old star, Ryan Williams, at number six. And what's crazy about Ryan Williams, because to me, it's the most outstanding player. And are you impacting your team on the field? Ryan Williams, quote unquote, only has 16 catches. OK, you want to hear a crazy stat? Ryan Williams is averaging 30 yards per catch. Well, 28.9 yards per catch. Forgive me. And when I look at the Heisman, it is a situation where the Heisman should be. Are you impacting your team and are you impacting winning? Well, we talked about it after the Georgia game. This was a guy who, if we remember, not only had the game winner against Georgia, which sounds crazy for a wide receiver, but his 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 touchdown broke open the Western Kentucky or the South Florida game when that was close in the fourth quarter. 
He had two TDs against uh, Western Kentucky in week one, had a big TD that really broke open the Wisconsin game. So another one. I don't know if it's realistic to expect a 17-year-old to average 29 yards per completion going forward, but I'll tell you this. I, I, I really do think that he deserves some recognition. Like I said, I looked up the FanDuel odds probably about six, seven days, not six, seven days ago, whatever it was, the day after the Georgia-Alabama game. He wasn't even on the board. How about this? Ty Simpson, Alabama's backup quarterback, is on the board, but not Ryan Williams. I think that'll change. If you are in a state with legalized sports betting, see if you can get him on the board because you could probably get him at crazy odds right now. And if Alabama keeps winning, he is going to impact that.